going to call to order this meeting of the Transportation and Public Works Committee for Tuesday, October 13th. My name is Lene Palmasano and I'm Vice Chair of this committee. Chair Wright could not attend today's meeting, so with me at the dais today are Council Members Cam Gordon, Lisa Bender, and Wang Yang. Uh, first, please let the record reflect we have a quorum. First, I'll read through the consent agenda and committee members can let me know if they have any questions or comments on any of these items and we can pull those for further discussion. The first two are uh, road projects that it makes sense to postpone them till next year. We want to have this work done before we assess for it. So number three is 9th Street South, 11th Street North South, and 12th Street North South, and 7th Avenue North Street Resurfacing Project, Postponement and Reduction of Assessments. That's passage of a resolution amending resolution 2015-R121, passed March 20th of 2015 to postpone the resurfacing of 7th Avenue North postpone the levy of special assessments for the benefited properties on 7th Avenue North until the resurfacing is completed and to reduce the total assessments to be levied for the project in 2015 from $666,841.82 to $655,360.51 due to the postponement. The second part of this is passage of resolution amending resolution 2015-R122 passed March 20th, 2015, to reduce the total amount of assessment bonds requested to be sold for the project from 666845 to $655,361. We're referring that to Ways and Means. The second part of this is St. Anthony Parkway Bridge Street Reconstruction Project Postponement of Assessments. Passage of Resolution Amending Resolution 2014-R194, passed April 25th, 2014 to postpone the levy of special assessments for the St. Anthony Parkway Bridge Street Reconstruction Project until 2016 to begin collection on 2017 property tax statements due to the fact that the associated road construction work will not be completed until 2016. Number five is 24th Street East and Snelling Avenue Street Reconstruction Projects postponement of assessments due to some difficulties we ran into with sewer and Excel energy work. Passage of a resolution amending resolution 2015-R042 passed January 30th, 2015 to postpone the levy of special assessments for the 24th Street East and Snelling Avenue Street reconstruction projects until 2016 to to begin collection on 2017 property tax statements due to the majority of the work on the project being completed in 2016. We're referring that to ways and means. Item number six, 34th Avenue South and 43rd Street East Street resurfacing projects, cancellation and reduction of assessments. Uh, the first part is passage of a resolution amending resolution 2015-068 passed February 13th, 2015 to remove south, the south 220 feet of 34th Avenue South from the project area. The second is passage of resolution amending resolution 2015-R166 passed April 17th, 2015 to cancel and reduce special assessments and reduce the total assessment for the project from $32,390.96 to $23,417.26 due to a reduced resurfacing plan. The third part of this is the passage of a resolution amending resolution 2015-R-167 passed April 17th to reduce the total amount of assessment bonds requested to be sold for the project from $32,395 to $23,420. Item number seven is controller conversion and intelligent traffic signal enhancement project agreements. The first part is pa passage of a resolution authorizing execu execution of an agency agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation to allow the city to use federal aid funds for work to be done by the city forces in conjunction with the controller conversion and intelligent traffic signal enhancement project, that's work with Met Council funds, and appointing the Commissioner of Transportation as the city's agent in accepting these federal aid funds. The second part is authorizing execution of the construction cooperative agreement number 50-20-15 with Hennepin County for the project. Number eight is the Southern Northeast Minneapolis Watershed Modeling Project funding agreement, authorizing execution of this agreement with the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization for the Southern Northeast Minneapolis Watershed Modeling Project. Funding will be provided by MWMO in an amount not to exceed $95,000. 
Item number nine is the 6th Avenue North Paving Project, a variance request. This is a passage of a resolution directing the city engineer to proceed with a variance request from Minnesota Department of Transportation State Aid Rules for the vertical profile on 6th Avenue North from 5th Street North to Washington Avenue North. My understanding is this is will make the docks fit. Um, item number 10, Washington Avenue Street Reconstruction Project from Hennepin to 5th, cancellation of the public hearing. There are some delays due to utility work that was greater than anticipated. So we are canceling the public hearing scheduled for October 27th for the Washington Avenue Street Reconstruction Project. Item number 11 is bid for A, B, and C parking facilities repair. This is a pass-through of MnDOT funds accepting a single bid of RAM Construction Services of Minnesota LLC in the amount of $373,000. $737.37 to furnish and deliver all labor materials and incidentals necessary for the A, B, and C parking facilities repair project and authorizing a contract for the project. Item number 12, bid for special service district snow removal services, accepting the low bid of custom products for a total estimated annual expenditure of $906,520 to furnish and deliver all labor, materials, and incidentals necessary for special service district snow removal services and authorizing a contract for the services. I would like colleagues to ask that this gets referred, proceeds through the process to ways and means, but for now goes without recommendation um, as Chair Reich is still working on elements of this bid um, with the provider. So do committee members have any questions on these items? Seeing no questions, I move approval of consent agenda items three through 12 with the note that item number 12 will be forwarded without recommendation along to ways and means. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it and those items are approved. Now we have two public hearings this morning. Um, the first is Special Service District 2016 Assessments. First, it's passage of resolution approving the special services, budget cost estimates, and lists of service charges for the 2016 for the Uptown, Dinkytown, Central Avenue, Stadium Village, Eat Street, Lowry Hill, 48th Street, and Chicago Avenue, and Linden Hill Special Service Districts, non-428A districts, and directing transmittal of those assessment rules to the Hennepin County Auditor. Moving Director Kotke, did you want to present this item? And then Mr. Carlson will be speaking to it. And then we will open it up for those that are here for the public hearing. Director Kotke. Good morning, Madam Chair. Yes, a Andy Carlson will make the introduction and presentation for this particular item. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. Uh, my name is Andrew Carlson. I'm the Project Manager for Special Service Districts. Uh, as was stated, there are eight Special Service Districts before you today that are seeking approval of their 2016 proposed services and service charges. These eight districts, plus the eight districts that already received approval back in September, account for the 16 Special Service Districts throughout the City of Minneapolis. In June, Public Works uh, worked with each of the district's advisory boards to recommend the services, prepare estimated budgets, and review their assessment methodologies for the coming year. These service charges would be collected on their 2016 real estate taxes in the same manner as special assessments. Each affected property owner was mailed a notice of public hearing with the notice uh, service charge, uh, with the stated service charge 10 days in advance of the public hearing. Staff therefore recommends the following, passage and summary publication of a resolution for the Uptown, Dinkytown, Central Avenue, Eat Street, Stadium Village, Lowry Hill, Chicago Avenue South, and Linden Hill Special Service Districts. Approval of the special services and budget cost estimates in the lump sum of $1,180,900 for 2016. Approval of the service charges and the list of service charges or the assessments in the lump sum amount of $1,215,185 for the year 2016. And to direct the city clerk to transmit certified copies and the list of service charges to the Hennepin County Auditor. And finally, direct the city engineer to proceed with the work. That concludes my presentation and I can stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Are there any questions from committee members? I don't see any. So. Uh, with your permission, I will open the public hearing. I'll take speakers in the order they're signed up. Um, if 
I, actually, I don't believe there are any signed up. So do we have any speakers to present at today's public hearing? Any speakers? Any speakers? Okay, I will close the public hearing and ask staff, um, well, I don't need to ask the staff to respond to questions. I will go ahead and move the appro to approve this motion as I read at the beginning. There haven't been questions from committee members, so we have a motion before us to approve the 2016 assessments for special service districts. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, um, and that proposal has been approved. Item number two relates to adopting and levying assessments for water and sewer service repair lines that remain unpaid. Director Kotke, I understand that Mr. Rogers will be presenting this item. Uh, Madam Chair, that is correct. Uh, Rock Rogers will make this presentation. I, I will just wanted to point out that uh, this is the first year we've used an administrative hearing process for both the water and sewer service line repair assessments. Um, I think that's worked very well. Uh, we aren't able to resolve all the issues, but uh, I think we're able to resolve many of them. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Rock. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, I'm here to present the water service line and sewer line repairs. We had 119 properties for water service line repairs, 19 properties for sewer repairs. Uh, we did have an administrative hearing on the 27th of August. We had two properties show up contesting for the, um, for the water service line repairs. No properties showed up for the sewer at that particular date. Um, the administrative hearing judge did make a decision based on his findings of fact, even though we may disagree with his findings of fact, we do concur with his findings. Um, the property, Mr. Lipson at 1729 2nd Street North is here to um, contest uh, his, his service line. Any other questions? Any questions, council members? No. Nope. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Um, First, I will move to, I will open the public hearing. Uh, we do have two people signed in. The first is the address that you suggest. Um, Mr. Barry Libsey. Thank you, sir. Please come up and state your name and address so we have it for the record. Good morning. My name is Barry Libsen, and the ad property address is 1729 North 2nd Street in Minneapolis. Thank you. I am here today. Um, I have a letter from the city that uh, was presented to me on July 17, 2014, to have some repairs done to our property, which uh, they gave me 10 options to, to hire a contractor from, which I picked three of them and chose one. And from that time forward, everything should have been in order as this went through the system and I was just waiting for notification. Uh, from that time, we had hired, signed a contractor, signed a contract with uh, inner city water and sewer, and they were to take care of this problem with the city managing it, making sure they were getting their job done. Uh, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in February 23rd of 2015, another letter came through, a call came through, excuse me, from Mike Olmsted stating that there was a, a line leaking and that needed to be repaired also. And I had asked him approximately what the cost would be and he replied $3,900 is generally what the valve would run to replace this. And the first bid came through, sorry to backtrack, but the first bid came through at $6,500, which I have the contract here with Inner City Water. And I also have the statement signed and notarized about the water service line repair and the, and the manhole repair. And it states, uh, I, in accordance with Chapter 509 of Minneapolis Code of Ordinances, request and authorize the city engineer of the city of Minneapolis or his authorized agents and representatives including any licensed plumber to prove by the city to enter upon the above described premises and make all necessary repairs or replacement to the water service line, dated 8 14 uh, Last month, 8 15 there was a hearing I attended here, and I got this information back last Thursday after calling the city to find out what had happened with that hearing. And... 
Uh, I have the letter. I, I'll just read from this letter. The city initially found that a manhole located in the street, this is the city's position, excuse me. I don't do this on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've ever done it, so I might need to be asked a question to be, be clarified with any of this information. Uh, city's position, the city initially found that a manhole located in the street that served as access to the valve for the water services at 1729 Second Street North was in need of repair. As per MCO, 509-340, the owner of the water line is responsible for fixing the service line. The letter was sent to myself on July 2nd of 2014, requesting the repair be made. Although Mr. Lipson, myself, did contract with inner city water to do the repair, the repair was not completed. On February 23rd of 2015, the area in need of repair had deteriorated to the point where emergency repairs had to be made to protect the public. Um, I was never notified that this was an emergency. While attempting to, to stop the leak in the water line, the tap sleeve cracked further and started to leak excessively, creating the need for additional time and effort to repair the water line. The repairs were made at a cost of $20,356. Uh, price quoted to me originally was what I had contract for was 6,500 for the contract and 3,900, the estimated repairs from Mike Olmstead with the city water, the foreman for the city of the water, water works. Uh, my position, as it goes on to state, is after the initial letter from the city, the owner contracted with inner city water to do the repair work for $6,500. When contractor attempted to do the repair, he found that there was a leak, the repair of which was not included in the original estimate, and the contractor stopped working on the repair. Uh, in their wording here, the next sentence says the owner contacted the city. That's not the case. It's the, the, the word city and owner are reversed. It's actually the city contacted myself and states that the city quoted him an additional cost of $3,900 to repair the leak. Then it states the owner did nothing further because he thought the city would act, which I was told they were going to act. I said, that's okay, whatever you have to do to fix it. In addition, the owner disputes the need for a new manhole cover and ring because it was unnecessary to replace them, which that was granted to me in the next paragraph. Um, and the owner states he should only pay $10,400 for the cost of the original estimate. Their finding of facts then reads, the manhole and water line in question are clearly the responsibility of the owner of the property located at 1729 North 2nd Street. The owner did contract with inner city water to do the work for it says $6,400 here on paper, but it's actually $6,500. Uh, when the contractor started the work, it found that the repair was more extensive than initially believed because of a leak in the water line service and therefore stopped work. Uh, again, the next paragraph starts out saying the owner contacted the city, which is incorrect. The city contacted myself and was told that the additional repair would cost approximately, would cost approximately $3,900. Despite, despite the fact that the condition of the line was worse than originally thought, it says clearly the owner did nothing further to repair the line. Why it says that, I, I don't understand, because they already had my okay, I have the contract right here, and the signed and notarized letter giving the city the right to do, to make all necessary repairs or replacement to the water service line, dated 8-21-14, here we're in February of 2015 already. This resulted in the deterioration of the manhole to the point where emergency action to address this condition of the manhole and service line was required of the city in order to protect the public. Once again, I go back to the, eight, the 2014 contract. I did nothing to stand in anybody's way for this to, to be resolved. Something else took time to get this done. I didn't prevent anything from happening. I couldn't have. I don't understand. The repair work done by the city was much more extensive and hence much more costly than, than the work envisioned by initial estimates. They stated the cost of the repairs, the, the cost of the repair appears to be reasonable. Finally, reasoning. The city notified the owner of the need for repair. While he did hire a contractor, he did not follow through in having the repair made. My quote, not true whatsoever. Documents right here 
signed, notarized, all intact. Um, because of this condition became critical in February of 2015, six months later than I have the signed papers for, necessitating the emergency repairs. As the repair was being made by the city, further problem problems revealed themselves requiring further repair than the repairs originally thought to be necessary. This led to the increased cost of repair. The assessment is reduced by $322, the cost of the manhole cover and ring because the city could not establish that it was necessary to replace them. Uh, furthermore, then I was told by the city at the hearing on the 27th that intercity water and sewer did not do any of the repairs that I had contracted with them to do. Um, and the price for their work, the city had in fact done their job. And my contract with was with Intercity Water. I was never contacted by Intercity or the, or the City of Waterworks, letting me know that they weren't going to do the work or they hadn't done any work. And I found this out at the uh, previous hearing as well, to to the first time I'd heard that information. Um, I guess what it comes down to is here is my new position. I have all the three bids here with all the faxes to the city with the pricing and the price information. And I also have a question, if I can ask a question, I don't know how it works. Sure. But on the Mr. Lipson, you can ask any questions that you want and staff is recording them and then we'll respond to them okay. after Thank you're you all done. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, <laughs> on the billing for the work that was done by the Waterworks, City of Minneapolis Waterworks Department, there is a column that says OVDs after pricing. I don't understand what that is. I don't know what that means, and I'd like to have the definition of that. Um, as for my my uh, owner's position, the, my final, uh, I authorized the repairs to be done by inner city water, and I have the agreement here again, uh, and the notarized agreement for the water service line repair. From this date, the city did not communicate with me again until February 23rd of 2015, when I was notified that a leak was found, which the city of Minneapolis repaired to avoid continued water loss and possible property damage, never mentioning any emergency. This notification was done over the phone by Mike Olmsted and quoted to cost $3,900. Uh, while the owner disputed the cause of this damage, it was assessed and agreed upon at the time on 3-26-15 I should have put, there was a period there, I'm sorry, I went on too fast. On 3-26-15, owner received letter stating repairs had been done by inner city water and the total amount of the repairs was $20,356. Uh, I opted to dispute this total amount and in multiple lines of communication between 3-26-15 and today's date, including the letter, the appeal, the assessment of 9-3-15, it is repeatedly stated that inner city water was responsible and carried out the repairs. However, the bill resulting in $20,356,000 total repairs is assessed by the city of Minneapolis, implying the city of Minneapolis carried out the repairs at a much higher cost to the owner. I'm questioning the timeliness of the work, which would likely have prevented any leak, negating need for leak repair. I also question who actually carried out the repairs if inner city water carried out repairs as is stated repeatedly in documents provided by the city of Minneapolis. Then total amount of repairs should equal the previously quoted $6,500 for manhole replacement, $3,900 for leak repair at a maximum. This is provided that the leak was not caused by an error that allowed nearly six months to pass prior to beginning work on the signed, notarized, and authorized repairs. And therefore, owner, I continue to dispute the cost of this repair. Thank you, Mr. Libson. Um, this is clearly a, a very involved um, a, a appeal, and, it, and I appreciate your testimony and all of the details. This is certainly a cost that has spiraled uh, quite a bit. Um, the way that this works is now, if, if, if you're done, um, we have one other person signed in to, to speak their case on their appeal, and then we will have staff respond to both of you and 
each of the individual questions. That you okay, raised. thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm sorry, Mr. Libson, we have a question. Council Member Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, I wanted to make sure since um, there's so, so much information provided, you do have a significant uh, uh, assessment here. Did you have a specific amount you were requesting uh, uh, I have a contract and agreed upon, upon a price for the 6500 and the $3,900, which totals $10,400, and the charges were were reduced on the last hearing by $322 from the 20356 So whatever the math is, I don't have that number right in front of me, but I think it was $20,040, something like that. But your request would be for $10,400 of assessment. Um, that's what I would be willing to pay that's what I'm what I feel that I owe thank you thank you next we have Ms. Carolyn Hester Johnson Thank you for coming. If you want to state your name and address for the record. Excuse me, Carolyn Hester Johnson, 4140 Chicago Avenue, Minneapolis. Thank you. And you're, you're speaking in dispute of 4140 Chicago Avenue? Yes. Great. Go ahead. All right. There is a tree that is was planted on the boulevard of where I live. Um, back, the, uh, the bathroom was, the, the toilet was plugging up. And um, then we would go down into the basement, my ex-husband and myself, and where the sewer runs, it started overflowing a little bit, never flooded the whole kitchen, so um, the whole basement. So we called a couple of people out, and the last person before the work was done was Ron, the sewer rat. And no one, because of our house being 90 something years old, the sewer, as I found out, the sewer runs forward. So um, no one could get anywhere, they couldn't get 31 feet uh, because of roots that had grown into the sewer. So Ron the sewer rat had said, why don't you try to put some root killer in it? But that didn't work. So he said that maybe you should call uh, a company that actually does the work. So we called Sitchies Water and Sewer. They came out in November of 14. And um, they put a camera down, and they couldn't get through because of the roots of the tree on the boulevard. And they said it was bad. So first they thought it would cost 2700 But as they went further, it got more expensive, 6500 So I had to call the utilities connection. I called Brad Blackhawk, and he told me what would happen, that they had to come and they had to block the streets and everything like that. So I was upset because I was like, why am I responsible for this tree on the boulevard, had it not been there, then this problem would have never happened. So they blocked the tree and then uh, they blocked the, the street and Sitchies came out and fixed it, but it turned out to be $6,500. So anyway, I called Brad back and I said, I don't think that I should be responsible for a tree that was parked on the boulevard, that is planted on the boulevard and it was the roots from the tree that caused the problem. So Brad had expressed to me, he was trying to work with me. He told me that it was out of their hands, that I had to call the Minneapolis Park Board and Recreation who plants the trees. So I did. And I called in January and talked to someone named Dan, and he gave me the runaround. So, and he said, well, we'll check into it. And they never did, so it got cold. Uh, after the work was done. So I called back to the Minneapolis Park Board and Recreation in April of 2015, and I talked to a young lady named Sarah who gave me James, who was in head of it. So I spoke to him and told him, 
And he said, well, the water line is so far above the sewer. I said, I understand that. But nobody could get through because of the roots of that tree, which could have caught, which caused the problem. And um, so he said, well, I don't know if there's anything that we can do about it. And so I kept calling, calling. I talked to, uh, 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 once, I did, once I found out the utilities connection couldn't do anything about it, I kept calling the forestry department back. So finally, James from forestry said, well, we'll just come and cut the tree down. Now they came and marked it. Now they told me it was a perfectly good tree and that they couldn't cut it down. But because it's part, it was planted over my water and sewer, they came and marked it green to cut it down. Of course, it is still there. And my dispute is that if the tree wasn't there, then I don't think, I don't believe that would have happened. I've checked with my neighbors on either side of me who doesn't, you know, their trees are gone. They're kind of spaced out on my side of the, on the even side of the street. And they have had no problems. I'm the only home that I know of that that tree was parked over the uh, the sewer line. And I asked forestry, I said, do you guys not check these properties before you plant these trees? And he said, normally we do. But in this case, they didn't. So they came and marked it. So what had happened was if you're not going to come and if you're not going to do anything about it, then why did you come? and mark the tree for it to be cut down. And then he asked me, did I want to plant it there again? I said, no, because this problem can happen again. Now, and I have pictures where the, the tree, it's growing roots all up around it again. And, and, and they were big. And so that's my dispute that 6,500 is a lot of money for something that I don't feel that we were.